personally, if it was up to me, I'd give him my brain, man, to play this weekend because I don't even use it that much personally. <laughs> so. Hey, what's good, Finn Nation? Welcome to the number one podcast and show for the Miami Dolphins here at FIU. It's your boy, Esteban Big Waffle Rodriguez. I'm Alfredo, the leader of Two and On. And it's your boy, Ant. <laughs> Hey, yo, wait, no, oh did you have a... Oh, my gosh. No, I... No nickname. I, okay, let me, let me explain it to you guys. So, the first three weeks, I was perfect with my predictions. Pick the Dolphins to win three straight times. I was going to pick the truth as an ode to the best basketball player of our generation, Paul Pierce. Oh, my but, gosh, bro. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, not perfect anymore. <laughs> so, it's so you art. Still just I'm going to stick to Ann. Maybe if I get another prediction right, I'll, I'll go back to the truth. Oh. It's back to the drawing board. But yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, all right. We got to talk about last week's game, bro. Dolphins versus Jets. We all thought it was a clear win that the Dolphins were going to win. And then in the first, very first play, Teddy Bridgewater gets sacked, and they put him into concussion protocol almost immediately. Now, I understand what the NFL is trying to do, all right? They're trying to, to, to please the audience, all right? Because they didn't want to mess up like they did with Tua. But the thing is, we clearly saw, right, with Tua, it was a concussion. He was bad. Teddy Bridgewater, he got up. He was good. He was perfectly okay. They were like, now, son, you got to get out. And they took him out for the entirety of the game, which I have mixed feelings for. I, I, on, I wanted to start on that because I feel like these new concussion protocols post tour have really screwed over a lot of teams because I understand the need to, to protect these players from head injuries and not even just uh, hits to the head because that's not what concussions come out of necessarily, but it's repeated blows to your body that can cause concussions as well and I understand the need to protect the players. But I feel like the players are, are being babied in a way. You know, Teddy Bridgewater didn't hit his head. He didn't stumble, as the spotter said. And that the fact that they called him out on that, it caused him to get into the concussion protocol and took him out for the rest of the game. And I feel like these new protocols just incentivize defenses to cheap shot quarterbacks and other players on the offense because they know they're going to be put in the protocol, whether they hit their head or not. And that's going to take them out of the game permanently. I, I think they're doing well by the players to protect them, but it's killing the product of the game and it's doing it's overprotecting the players in my opinion so like I said it incentivizes defenses to cheap shot quarterbacks and it might cost a team a playoff game in the future and I think it's going to be revised heavily when it does yeah the you could tell that they were doing it simply because of what happened with Tua they wanted to make sure there was no second especially with the Dolphins there was not a second occurrence of an, another quarterback who can they can say got a concussion because they let him in so it sucks to see that Teddy was ruled out after one single play, and then on top of that, it was a safety. It was just a, a mess to start the game. It was ugly to see. I mean, yeah, and that wasn't the only game that was affected by this new Tua rule, right? The, the Chiefs versus the Raiders, the Atlanta Falcons versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, there was two calls that were questionable uh, during a sack, you know? They called the unnecessary roughness for a, a clean, straight tackle. And I feel like that is partially because of what happened to Tua. You know, the, the NFL is getting way more strict with how they're treating the quarterback. And it's, and it's really killing the game because everyone knows. All the players know what they're signing up for, especially the Yeah, I did want to say that, that they're just an inherent danger of playing football. And I guess that's a, a fundamental and moral issue with the NFL and the sport in general that you know, this, like, that's the price you have to pay at times, and it's unfortunate, but like you said, that hit on, on Tom Brady should never have been a roughing the passer call. And if that's going to be a roughing the, rough the passer call, then the sack on two against yeah. the Bengals should have been. I was just going to say the same thing. Yeah, so that, like, that one was way worse. Yeah, yeah. so I, I disagree with the whole overprotection of, of players. I, I understand what they're trying to do, but I feel like because they failed Tua, they're failing everybody else because of it. All right, let's get into the, the game versus the Jets. Uh, yeah, so Teddy Bridgewater gets injured, Skyler Thompson gets in. I'm excited. He did amazing in the preseason, but at the end of the day, the preseason is the preseason, and it's way different from the regular season, and we saw that happen. I told you guys at the beginning of the season, I thought there was a little too much noise for Skyler Thompson. I think this game made it clear that Teddy Bridgewater is our backup, and Skyler is our third, is our third stringer. Uh, I, I heard way too much noise of him even starting over Tua at some points because of his strong arm. And I, I really want people to realize how much 
Tua was a part of the success of the team early on in the season after these first two games because that noise I heard about Skyler starting was some nonsense in my opinion. And I, Skyler did his best. It, it's tough to be thrown in as a rookie in that situation and, and to make your NFL debut like that. But yeah, I, I really hope people realize now how much Tua was a part of what we did in the first three weeks. I agree. Uh, I think that Skyler, like you said, got a lot of hype after the three pre preseason games where from the first one he started that everyone was already hyping him up saying Skyler QB1, bunch of nonsense. Uh, you know how Miami fans like to overhype and it was just nonsense as you can see. The, the numbers weren't horrible, they weren't great either. Uh, he also put together some good drives, some not so good drives, the interception, the fumble, had a few turnovers. So he looks very raw out there. You can tell that he's a rookie. Uh, I do think because of his arm strength, he has a future in this league. I just don't know how long it's going to take for him to become that starter level quarterback. I mean, yeah, and then I got to take about what I said last week because I, I was, I was disrespecting the Jets left and right, but, <laughs> but they did win a game that they were supposed to win. All right, if you look on paper, if you get the second string quarterback injured and then they put in the third string quarterback and you still cannot win, especially by the amount that the Jets won. Then, then what are you doing? Because you, the Jets had almost everyone on their starting roster. All right, they had a completely, perfectly healthy team, and some of the rookies that we probably didn't notice early in the season had their moment, had their chance to shine. Yeah, I did want to mention that that defense has some studs. I mean, Sauce Gardner was all over the Miami defense, had an interception, and obviously had the sack on, or not the sack, but the hit on Teddy Bridgewater that ended up taking him out of the game. And he was all over the the Dolphins' uh, passing game throughout the game. So, yeah, th they have some studs on there. The defense held up. Uh, offense also killed us. Brees Hall and uh, Brees Hall killed Miami's uh, pass defense and the rush defense had a big day in general. So, yeah, the uh, Jets definitely deserve more credit than I gave them. But like you said, it's a game they, they had to win. You know, you, you had the Dolphins had their cornerbacks one and two out of the game. Uh, Teron Armstead ended up uh, leaving the game with an injury, and obviously we had a third stringer in. So that's a game the Jets should win. I don't want to give them too much credit uh, because you know they have been or they have been our sons for the last couple of years, but they definitely deserve it for this game. Yeah, on top of that, it was on the road for Miami, so they had the home court event, home field advantage, and yeah, like you said, they have a, a lot of good players, young players. They're a team that's. In the next few years, they're going to be dangerous. Um, like you said, Brees Hall, I was really impressed with how he played. This is my first time really watching a full Jets game. So seeing Brees Hall running the ball, he looked, he could find the hole every single time. The Dolphins don't have the best run defense, so it wasn't surprising to see. And like you said, I mentioned it at the end of last episode, Sauce Gardner as a good matchup this week against Tyreek. I think he got the best of the Dolphins just with the interception. Kind of a broken play. Still read the read the play well, and then the, the safety slash concussion play that he forced on Teddy. Uh, he he looks like he's going to be one of the best defensive players over the next few years. And as I said, you know, uh, I was giving props to the Jets. That doesn't mean that I still want excuses from the Dolphins, Absolutely. right? Because this week it was what? Teddy Bridgewater was our second stringer. Yeah. Oh, he was out. Last week, oh, it was two was out, all right? Yeah. And we had uh, Xavier Howard injured. All right, but good teams still find ways to win. On top of that, right. it, this game was still relatively close most and, of the way. Until the fourth quarter. Yeah, uh, it was 19-17 with about nine and a half minutes left until Jason Sanders missed the field goal. And I do want to talk about Jason Sanders because he has been pretty concerning. We know him to be one of the most accurate kickers in the league, especially from deep. And he is kicking six for eight this season. It's not bad, but his two misses have been from over 50 yards. And crucial, too. Yeah, so that's not that's the last thing you want out, out of your kicker and a kicker that we know to be this good. Uh, but yeah, it was a close game up until the fourth quarter. And then all momentum swung the Jets' way, and it ended up being the blowout that the scoreline says it was. But I don't think it was indicative of how the game truly went. If it wasn't for that last quarter, you know, Miami it would look, no, people wouldn't be panicking as much. I've seen a lot of crazy talk already. Dolphins back to the same old Dolphins, but this was a close game. The, the score is not indicative, like you said. When, once he missed that kick, the momentum completely shifted. The team had the fans behind them, and they just went on, and Brees Hall kind of killed us at the end. But the, the Dolphins put themselves in a good position to compete in this game. Like you said, if Sanders would have made that field goal, we would have been up. I think we could have won this game. Uh, the defense was playing well until they had to go back on the field, and then they got the, f I also think the Dolphins gave it up on fourth down the next possession, 
and it was just a mess at the very end, but there was it was competitive until the end. Yeah. And it's only gonna get harder as we come into playing the Minnesota Vikings, who are a competitive team this year. I don't care what nobody says. They're four and one for a reason. Coming their off offense, a big win against the Bears. Their offense is 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 really strong, and our defense has been slacking for, uh, since for what we've known them to be. Yeah. We're, we're supposed to be, or we're thought to be, a defensive oriented team, and we're kind of slacking on both sides of the field, yeah. right? And I feel like this game will test, okay, how will the Dolphins be able to perform, you know, no matter what the circumstance, no matter if Skylar Thompson does play up through the entire game or if Teddy Bridgewater does come back, what are the adjustments that the Dolphins are willing to make or the Dolphins can make to, to start becoming that winning team that we saw earlier in the season? I think they had a really good winning formula with uh, Tua and the whole team healthy, but when he went out, it, it, it's, it kind of broke apart because Teddy and, and Skyler, no disrespect to them, they just don't bring what Tua does. I think in terms of the passing game and the leadership on the field as well, you know, Tua's a team captain for a reason. McDaniel's still unsure about who the quarterback is going to be for this week. It could be any of the three. Uh, and I, I think at this point, it starts to, if, the, if Tua does play, it starts to look a little desperate on the Dolphins' part. I, I think regardless, he was going to be considered. But it does look a little desperate on their part. And personally, if it was up to me, I'd give him my brain, man, to play this weekend. Because I don't even use it that much personally. So <laughs> I, I just want my guy back out there. And, and I want to get back to seeing this team playing the way they did the first three weeks. Because that was the most fun I've had as a Dolphins fan so far. Uh, I think this game is going to be a good one. The, like you said, the Vikings have been good this season. The high-powered offense with Justin Jefferson at the top of it. And that's a big concern for me going into this game. Just because our corners, our past defense this year has been bad. Uh, we're ranked, I think, 31st in the passing yards allowed. So Jefferson is one of the best young receivers in the league. And I'm scared this week because if the offense can't keep up with their offense, we're screwed. Dalvin Cook as well is coming off another big game. Yeah, so he's Miami's something to watch out for. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the strategy they should come in going into the Minnesota Vikings would be the adjustments they would make if they were able to play the Bengals again. Because to me, those offenses are relatively similar. Yeah. Right? They're both strong receivers, strong running back, uh, strong in the backfield. Uh, you need whatever you didn't do uh, against the Bengals, you have to do for the Minnesota Vikings. Because I feel like that, that, is the, that should be the strategy going into this, this game. Yeah, that's a good comparison, the uh, two offenses. Look, Jamar and Jefferson, they're like the same. And then, yeah, Cook, I think Cook is better than Mixon, so it's going to be a tough matchup. It is going to be difficult to game plan for them, though, because this uh, defense that the Dolphins are going to play isn't going to be the same one that we did against the Bengals because the Dolphins are battling a lot of injuries, you know. We're still going to be without Byron Jones for a little while. Xavier Howard is still questionable. He's day-to-day -day at the moment. And if that's the case, if we're starting in, in the sec if we're starting Noah Igbenogany in the second f in the second day, that's going to be a big concern for them because he's looked really bad. He, he I think his, the, his pick for for Miami has really set the, the team back, and that's why we're having to rely on on Byron Jones being healthy and X, you know, being healthy throughout the entire season at his age. So it, I think the Dolphins' injuries are a big concern heading into this one. And another thing. Keep the quarterback safe for this one, all right? We can't, we cannot have Skylar Thompson injured, all right? If Teddy Bridgewater does not play, the offensive line has to make sure that no one touches Skylar Thompson because they know as soon as he hits the ground, the Dolphins are going to take him out and we're going to put God knows who. Cedric Wilson, it was our backup. <laughs> Cedric Wilson. When Skylar went in. <laughs> all right, and then it's a done deal for the Dolphins, all right? So. Yeah, we get, we gotta change the ball. You know, we gotta change you know our strategy on offense, on defense. Get better on that. But the main thing is to just is to have the offensive line protect, protect, protect like they've never protected this season. Uh, the pass protection is gonna be even tougher this week because Teron Armstead is also questionable for the Sunday. Uh, and he also hasn't practiced at all during the week this season. He's only played games. He's been battling that toe injury since the preseason. So he's, he's still a question mark heading into Sunday. So I know you want to emphasize on the Dolphins protecting the quarterback, which I think the Dolphins should do. But, yeah, it, it's going to be tough with a depleted offensive line. Yeah, I think this week is going to be hard just with all the injuries, like you said, the uh, offense and defense. I think Tyreek is also battling something. So it's going to be big to see who practices towards the end of the week. Uh, at least this is a Sunday game, not any Thursday or anything crazy like that. So we have time to see who's going to be out there. And hopefully 
we'll give it our best shot. We need to get Jalen Waddle the ball. He's been essentially ignored the last two weeks, and I think he's our best receiver in terms of yards after catch. So I, we need to target him, get him more targets, get Tyreek more involved. And yeah, that's all, that's all I want. It's Jalen Waddle to get more touches because it, without him firing, our offense looks a lot weaker. Yeah, Tyreek Hill got seven, uh, seven receptions last game, only 47 yards. That is not good at all. Skylar Thompson only had, what, 166 yards in total for the whole game. Yeah. Still not good. We got to up those numbers. All right, you, you need to have or have the courage to, to, to throw to Tyreek on those big plays and Jalen Waddle. Remember, yeah. we went into this with the, with the one-two punch, Jalen and, and Tyreek, with that, you know, duo, you know, and... I don't want to say it's because, you know, of Tua, but, you know, the second stringers, the third stringers, everyone has to realize that those are the main targets. You yeah. have to get the ball to them. If not, you're going to end up with terrible numbers like this. Yeah, and the Tyreek, we know when he has seven receptions, he's well over 100 yards. So for him to get that little yard is definitely concerning because our pass defense, I mean, our pass offense hasn't looked like, like we've said, the way it did the first three weeks and that's in big part because of Tua not being in. Yeah, one last thing I wanted to say. I was really happy to see Raheem Mostert, uh, the numbers that he put up in this game. It's, it's been a while since we've seen an 100-yard rusher for the Dolphins, so it was nice to see Chase Edmonds struggled, but it was good to see that Mostert actually got some carries and did something with them. It was his second career 100-yard game, so that was definitely encouraging. But I also think it was a part of McDaniel, yeah. due to part of McDaniel wanting to get the, the ball out of Skyler's hands. Yeah. All right, now that we got our concerns, and what we want to see out of next week's game. It's time for our predictions. Listen, if we can't, you know, make the adjustments that we need, if we have done absolutely or close to nothing compared to what last week uh, our performance was, then we're not winning this game. I don't care if it's at home, all right? The Vikings are a really strong team, and if we lost to the Jets 17-40, I don't see anything good going coming for the for the. Miami Dolphins. So I'm predicting that the Vikings win 27-23. This is a legacy week for me because I've been wrong four weeks in a row, so I definitely <laughs> need one. I need to get one back for my credibility. <laughs> and I, I'm really nervous. Like, my brain is telling me that the Dolphins are not going to win this game, but I, I don't know. We don't know the quarterback situation yet. We don't know which one of the three are going to start. And I think the my prediction is definitely going to change depending on who does, but as of now, I'm going to predict as if Teddy Bridgewater is going to be starting. And I'm going to say it's going to be Vikings 31-23. Wow. Well, <laughs> you know, I pick the Dolphins every week. <laughs> uh, I think Teddy going up against his, the team that drafted him, this is a revenge game for him. He's going to come out. Well, hopefully, God willing, he's able to play in this game. Uh, but like you said, I think it kind of depends on who's going to start. So for now, like you said, if Teddy's starter, uh, I think the Dolphins can win this game. Uh, Hopefully they're right so I can be call myself the truth next week. <laughs> but I'm going to say Dolphins 28, Vikings 25. This is huge for Teddy because he's making his first start in Miami. And we know he, he's a homegrown kid. And I'm excited for him because he's living all our dreams pretty much, starting for your hometown team. So it's a big game for him. But... Yeah, we'll just uh, have to see. Very nervous going into well, this one, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> we have all the predictions in. That is it for this week. Thank you guys so much for watching FinTank. Uh, again, I'm Big Guapo. I'm the leader of Two and On. And it's your boy Ant for this yes, week. Ant. <laughs> this week. Next week, I'll be the truth. <laughs> I'm about to go head out to Tua's house and stay outside his window with the boombox. <laughs> I'm about to tell my guy that we need him back out there. <laughs> all right, guys. See you next week. Bye.